Hi, Maggie Marr here, founder of Maggie Marr Legal PC, uh, an entertainment law firm for creative individuals. So we find legal solutions for creators. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about the definition of a word that I that a lot of people in entertainment, including myself, toss around. It's called it's the word showrunner. And one of the questions I get asked by a number of people, friends and colleagues, people that I represent is, what is a showrunner? So first of all, I want to say that um, this is definitely defined in my book, Books to Film and TV, which is available on any other any distributor. I will put a link below to Books to Film and TV. So if you want to pick up a copy of that, it has a great glossary at the end. It also walks you through how books become film and TV and hopefully gives you some information about how to make that happen for yourself, as well as what happens when your book gets optioned for film and TV. So the word showrunner, who is a showrunner? Well, let me give you some examples of showrunners who are incredibly successful, and we probably, you and I both, have all heard their names. Shonda Rhimes is a showrunner, Penny Prentice is a showrunner, Issa Rae is a showrunner. Um, there are anyone who, so a showrunner by definition is an individual who can take the who can run a writer's room, take the idea for that episode from the formation of the idea all the way to the end to where you have a show that is ready to be distributed to the public. So how does somebody become a showrunner? Because in my mind, that sounds like the most fantastic job ever. So a number of showrunners start out as writers in writers' rooms. They are given, or they are given a job in a writers' room where they are one of num a number of writers who are helping to develop story and write different episodes for an ongoing show. And at that time, when they're a writer in the writers' room, they have a showrunner who is already running the show that they're writing on. Darren Starr is also a showrunner as well. So um, over time, that individual writer elevates. It's they get promotions within the room the the room that they're in, and they take on a more supervisory role through their life on the show. Um, to the point where they may themselves to become an executive producer or someone who's just below the level of showrunner. At that point in their career, a number of TV writers will then start to go out and pitch ideas that they themselves would like to become the showrunners on the show and the executive producer of the show. Because they have been in a writer's room and they have broken story and they've participated in a successful show, they have learned the, nece the necessary skills hopefully, to put their own show on. And at that point, their managers and agents will have them out pitching in the episodic TV space to different studios and streamers their own ideas so that they can step up to running their own show. So the showrunner is an incredible job and it requires an incredibly robust um, level of skills. Because let's think about that. So most, the majority of showrunners in town are what you would call writing showrunners. There are non-writing showrunners as well, but writing showrunners are incredibly valuable. Um, I want to use Shonda Rhimes as an example because she has had such an incredible career as a showrunner. Um, so she would have developed different ideas that she had for shows and then pitched that idea to executives of ABC, picked up, I think, her first show, which was Grey's. I think it was on ABC first um, or was on ABC or still is. So she runs the show, meaning that she runs the writer's room from week to week. She may not anymore, but in the beginning, she would have run the writer's room from week to week and she would have worked with her writers to develop the arc for the entire season and then have them write every individual show as the season went on. At the same time, she would have been in charge of working with uh, the actors, getting ready to prepare the show to be filmed, finding the director for that specific episode. A showrunner's work is really producerial as well as creative. And like I said before, it takes a robust skill set to be able to be a successful showrunner. Um, I, 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 it's really hard for me to think of any other job that requires so many skills of so many varying levels because not only does she have to understand, does the showrunner have to understand story and what good story is 
but she also has to be able to manage the production of each episode of the show. She also has to be able to communicate very well and very directly with a multitude of personalities and creatives with different skill sets, different egos, different different levels of, of their participation, all while um, remaining calm, cool, and collected. The, the budgets are, are very high, and she has to make sure that the executives who are financing the project feel very secure in her ability to bring to them or bring to the public each week a very well-crafted and excellent show for people to watch. So that's what a showrunner does. It's really amazing, right? It's it's remarkable. It's amazing. It's it's a skill set that is just um, incredible, and and I really like discussing uh, great showrunners because I really do look at them in awe and what they've been able to do with their careers and what they bring to us every single week, week in and week in and week out. Um, another great showrunner that I dearly love is Sue Tenney. She is fantastic. She's She's done a number, brought a number of books to film to the screen. So one of them being Virgin River, which is one of my favorites. So again, you know, if you'd like to learn more about books to film and TV, I do have a book. It's called Books to Film and TV, which talks about the things I've learned in my 20 plus years in the entertainment industry. I'll put a link below to the book so that you can pick it up if you would like to. If you felt like this information was informative and you enjoyed it, please press the like button uh, because that's helpful in getting this information to more people. If you are liking what we're doing in our books to film um, kind of subsection of the channel, please subscribe. We'll continue to do more things in the books to film area, as well as talking about how creators can diversify their portfolio and increase their revenue streams. Because, you know, creators are always the smartest people in the room and we want to keep those revenue streams robust so that creators can can keep creating. All right. Thank you so much for listening and, and have a great day.